Right. Hi guys, it's uh, Sanjay from E3D. And Josh. And we just want to talk to you about what you can expect in your Kraken packages, which is shipping now. So, take a look. These are your grab screws, and you'll use these for uh, securing your heater cartridges and your heat brakes. This is a pack that contains things like nozzles and uh, heater blocks, we'll go through that in a moment. This is a Kraken cooler block, which is the star of the show, and it does all the water cooling, holds everything together, and secures all the Bowden systems. We've got some uh, PTFE tubing here, and some standard Bowden couplers for the other end, i.e. the end that is not at the Kraken, but at your extruders. You've got your four heater cartridges. We've got four thermistors and ferrules to connect them. You've also got this ultra high temperature uh, wire to connect to your thermistors the, where the insulation won't burn. Really handy stuff. You've also got your 12 volt submersible pump and you've got some silicon rubber tubing which connects the whole water cooling system together. The first thing I want to talk to you about is these. These are the couplings and you may find that they come to you not quite assembled. They come as two parts. You've got the main coupling and you've got what's called the collet. The collet just needs to be pressed with a finger into the main coupling. You want to be careful as you press that in that the legs don't get sort of split apart and broken as they go inside. So just be aware of that and those pop in like that. These couplings to take this tubing and as you might expect with any other push fit tubing, the tube can go in but it can't be pulled back out. However, the key difference with these couplings that we supply is that the tubing is able to go all the way through the coupling. It's a really nice feature because it allows you to get that tube right up against the hobbed bolt that's driving the filament of your extruder so you can get your filament confined the whole way down. Just like any other push fit connector, to remove it you press in the collar and pull out the tubing by hand and it will let go. Okay, over to Josh and he's going to talk to you about the brakes and the nozzles. So, over here um, we've got a little pack which contains the crack and heat brakes, um, standard 0.4mm nozzles for 175 filament and standard V5 heater blocks. So, I'll just take these out of the pack here and show you how they all go together. Basically, these are these are very similar to V5 heat brakes in their function, um, but instead of having a thread, they've got a, a surface which has been ground to 5 microns so that they slide really nicely into the crack and cooler block. So to start with, it might be a little bit hard to get in, but once it's in, it'll slide really nicely and there is absolutely no movement in there. Uh, so it's very well constrained. You're not going to get that nozzle wiggling around at all. So these are assembled into the heater block. Um, in the same way as a V5 is. So you have your heat brake going in the top, like this. And your nozzle going in the bottom. Now we can identify the top and bottom because of that thermistor hole there. So, so you see the thermistor hole there, that's the side you want with the nozzle. Now, in terms of uh, completing the assembly of this, um, in terms of where to put the thermistor, connecting the heater cartridge, etc., um, just follow the guidelines for assembling the V5, which is online on our website. So that then goes as a block after it's been heated and tightened into the cooler block like this. We use two grub screws in these two holes here, again supplied in the kit, um, to secure the heat brake in place. Because the heat brakes are engineered to such precision, when they're placed in in the cooler block, if they're tightened up too tight, it can damage the surface of the heat brake. If this happens, it can cause your heat brake to become lodged in the cooler block. So the solution to this, to make sure this never happens, is to use little paper washers in the holes just in front of the grub screws. Now, when I say paper, I'm talking about card that's, that's not, you know, light card, 150 GSM type stuff. And so what we do is we take these little washers that we've cut out, which are about three mil across to go into the M3 holes, and we'll drop them in, in front, just in front of the grub screws when we go to put them in. So we install the brake, obviously there'll be a heat block on the other side of this, and we just drop the washer in there, which I've done, and we take this one, and we drop that in there. So you can see now there are these two little bits of paper just in the top of the hole. So what we do now is put the grub screw in on top and screw it down with the Allen key. So 
So when those are tightened up, you can see how much tension I'm applying here, just with the end of my finger on the end of the Allen key. It doesn't need a lot to hold the hot end in place. There's going to be absolutely no movement there. Um, you'll, you'll experience this for yourself when you have a go. Um, but the most important thing is to make sure you don't damage the surface of this heat brick. If you do, it's not a disaster. Um, all that's required is to take out one of these collets, use the reverse end of a 4 mil drill bit or some other 4 mil shaft, um, maybe put it in a drill or use it as a press to just push the heat brick out the other side. It's not a big deal, um, but if it does happen, it, it can cause you issues in the future. Once you've got your Kraken cooler block assembled with uh, the parts that get hot over here, you're going to be wanting to look at coupling your Bowden tube in here. It's important to note that the heat brakes have a hole in the top so that the tubing can actually slide into the heat brake and offer you a really smooth transition for your filament out of the tube and down into the hot zone where it gets melted. In order to get that right in that, you're going to need to push your tubing into there and you'll feel a little bit of resistance and then you're going to give it you're going to need to give it a good little shove and that will have the tubing actually pop down into the heat break and you'll actually see that I can demonstrate that here that, that tubing has slid down into that heat break and that's going to give you that full really smooth transition we've supplied you guys with a 12 volt submersible pump uh, this has got two bulbs on it one at the top one on the side the one at the top is the outlet the one on the side is the inlet um, so what you want to do is you want to take a reservoir, like this one, probably a bit bigger. we found that two litres is about the right volume. And you place your submersible pump in there. You attach one end of your hose to the top barb, and then you return one to the reservoir. That's on one side. And then on your printer end, you attach the two hoses to the two barbs of the Kraken. Like so. I'm not going to push them now because they're quite hard to get on. And once, they come, once they're on, they're quite hard to get off, which is good because it means they're not going to leak. Um, just, to, um, just to clarify, these are BSPT threads, both the barbs and this grub screw on the side. They've been loctited and torqued up by us, so we're sure they're not going to leak. The final step for this whole process is obviously you need to mount this on your machine. And for that purpose, you've got four M3 female threaded holes in the top of here and if you need to find the dimensions for those or indeed for any other part of the cracking kit you can go to our website and find drawings and that's e3donline.com forward slash documentation. Everyone who's bought a Kraken will be invited by email to join our Google Plus group. If anyone's having any problems or has any suggestions or wants to contribute to the community you can join us there and submit your thoughts and feedback.